known that here at this location there were spiny tail skinks. But after a day out with Campbell and showing him some of the signs of what to look for, not necessarily actually seeing a skink but finding their, their scats uh, and the latrines near piles of wood to pile it in, um, Campbell rang me up not long afterwards and said, oh Phil, you know, we've, we've got a pile of wood that's in the middle of a feedlot and we were about to burn it, but he said, I've now recognised that there's skinks probably living in it. I came out and had a look and without actually seeing a skink there myself, I'm very confident that there's a family of skinks living in that pile of wood. So today's come about that we have gathered together uh, deck officers, the Department of Environment Conservation, Wheatbelt NRM staff to come out and help us to try and catch this family of skinks and relocate them. We need to relocate them from the pile they're in because that is in the middle of a what is to be a sheep uh, feedlot. So there'll be 400 odd sheep in that small area at the end of the month. So what we intend to do here today is to slowly dissect the wood pile, um, catch any skinks we can. They will then be microchipped by a vet that we have coming from Balcata Veterinary um, Hospital and we will then reform the pile out in a patch of bush that is fully fenced off from the stock so there'll be no more disturbances around their little house. And from then on, well, we hope to just do some really good monitoring to see how far they're moving away and just so little is really known about their habit and movements and we really hope that this is a good start in starting to learn some things. Their natural habitat is hollow timbers generally in uh, gimlet, salmon, york gum sort of country. So they certainly adapt very well to our man-made refuges and there's only, there hasn't been too many populations within the wheat belt anyway that have been located in natural habitat so we'll put this family today this wood pile out in a patch of a uh, nice woodland area and then yeah hopefully as they need to expand their family they'll move into natural habitat and out of our man-made rubbish We've been using sensor cameras for quite some time in our work, not, not just with skinks but all sorts of mammals and, and uh, just seeing what's around. So A will set a, a sensor camera up at the end of the pile to see whether we can monitor their comings and goings. Natasha Moore from DEC is bringing some paint and we're actually going to paint some identifying marks on some of these lizards so that we can distinguish quite easily in the photo or um, the video and the other thing is with the microchipping it gives us that ability to later on uh, if, the, if the animals are captured again to run a scanner over them which will identify it as an individual animal that has been microchipped we'll be doing weights and measurements so we'll be able to monitor growth rates whether the skinks have stayed in their new habitat or whether they've gone um, we're also looking into purchasing a little scanner that can be left on site that will automatically monitor the, the skinks as they pass over or through this scanner. So yeah, it's an exciting time. We're unaware of any microchipping of western spiny tail skinks in Western Australia and may, maybe Australia, but I'm not sure on that one. So, yeah. They are listed as threatened on the, through the EPBC, so nationally listed as threatened. When there's been media releases about them before, we seem to get an influx of farmers saying, or, or people saying, oh, I've seen them here and I've seen them there. So we, we do figure there's probably quite a few more out there than is known. And it's, it's, but it's working with farmers, landholders like this, and the, their willingness to participate and register these sites at, with DEC, it, which, it's just great information uh, and yeah, it, it, it's an unknown quantity, but yeah, they're certainly not, they're still on the threatened list at this stage, yeah. So look, four days after the event, I have captured images of them on our camera traps still coming and going from their new place. So at this stage, we are very hopeful that it is successful. Sounds good. They do live in these little family groups and apparently the young will stay with the group for up to about three years. Um, so yes, I, I would think that you could second guess that perhaps the, they are paired off. Maybe one male will have a couple of females and that might be what we discovered the other day. With this particular western spiny tail skink, 
when they are discovered in a, a wood pile, it is generally their home. Uh, it's not just that they're passing through like a lot of other reptiles. The best thing we can do is to not disturb their habitat unnecessarily. Uh, you know, like even things like firewood collection uh, around. Of course. Uh, regulations can be a very crucial thing. Because they're on the uh, federal endangered list, um, you, it's not like other reptiles that WA only been allowed to keep in the last few years with permits. Uh, I doubt very much you would be allowed to get a permit to keep one of these.